Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Philemon chapter 8. Wherefore thou... I might be much bold in Christ, to enjoy the, enjoin thee that which is convenient. Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the age, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now what we're looking at here is we're looking at force versus love. To enjoin is to order with urgency or instruct with authority. So verse 8 is Paul is saying, listen on Philemon, I can force you. I can make you do it if I wanted to. I can beat your brains out. I can do a Peter Cartwright and force you down to the ground and make you get saved. It's that importance, that urgency, it was structure. He says, wherefore that is why. For what reason? The reason why Paul is right in Philemon. What is the reason? It's about Onesimus. It's an important subject to Paul. That he's taking his time to write. It needs much attention. Now we're talking about a man who got saved, who's a runaway slave. That Paul is sending him back to his owner. And Paul says this is urgent. This is important. As we'll see later on as we studied it, Paul wants to use Onassis in the ministry. He wants Onassis back as soon as possible. But he needs properly to get the owner permission. And Paul could take a stand like he did in the book of Acts. When he stood before the, the judge and he said, and they said, listen, Paul, you can go back with the Jews back to Jerusalem and you can be charged. And Paul took a stand, stood up and said, no, I appeal to Caesar. I'm not going back with those Jews. I have the right to go before Caesar. I want that. And that's where Paul took a stand. Now, Paul can mark up the final and say, I want him back now. And sometimes in the Christian life, you got to be firm. you got to be strong. you got to use force. Especially when you're acting against the world and Satan. So, and Paul mentions the age in verse 9. Now, we don't know what the age of Paul is. Compared to Philemon, is he older? But Paul is saying, you know what? I've gained experience. I've learned by my mistakes. Instead of using force, Philemon, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to beseech you. I'm going to seek the love that you have. Because it says here, in verses 4 through 7, that we read and studied already, that the character of Philemon, he is a dedicated Christian to serve the Lord and do right. And Paul is telling Philemon, listen, I'm going to leave it in the Lord's hand. And I'm going to trust that you're going to do the right thing. And if I use force, it's only going to be angry. Now we got to ask ourselves, when it comes to our own life, do we want force? Or do we want to be asked? You're going down the street and somebody shoves a gun in your back. Give me your money. That's my force. That doesn't feel good. It never happened to happen to me. 
I've seen my mother get robbed, but to me it hasn't happened. Or would you like to be driving down to a store and you see a bunch of people holding a sign and saying, please help us with money? Now that's asking. They're not forcing you. Like the guy with the gun. And we got to look at our children. And I'm saying this about this study, and I'm talking about children is. Children are under their parents. They're honored their parents, the mother and father. And I am not definitely saying, you know, your child doesn't want to go to church. Okay. But no, I'm not saying that. When I'm talking about asking and forcing as far as this study, I'm talking about somebody who's not under a parent, who has full facilities to make choices and decisions for God. And we got to ask ourselves, are we going to do it by force or are we going to do it because we're being asked to? The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's not by force. And if we willingly step out and go, God will reward us. One of the churches I was in forced the members to do things. The pastor of that church would, would make statements that he is who he is. And if you didn't like it, his words were, you can hit the road. And God doesn't honor that. You can't go do a ministry because your pastor makes you do it. Because your girlfriend, your boyfriend makes you do it. Now you may do it, but that's not going to get you rewarded by God. Now a church that I've never been in, I'll say that, as part as, part as their schooling is, you have to go on the street and preach. What do you do with that? You may get a grade, but what do you get with God? You're being forced to do something, and it may be against your will. Whereas, hey, let's go do something for the Lord today. You want to go with us? Okay. And the options here that Paul is saying, listen, I can force or I can ask. Paul will force no one. When Demas left, he didn't tie Demas' legs. He didn't handcuff him to a tree. Demas left me for you know for the world and went to back to Thessalonica. Paul would pray for him. There were others with me. <coughs> they left, but they left to go do the ministry. Only Luke was me because Luke wants to be with me. Luke wants to help me. Luke is being a disciple and apostle, and he's being a physician and helping others. And we've got two choices in life. We got we can do it because we want to do it, or we can do it because we want we have to do it. And if you were to follow the Schofield Division markers in his Bible. It says, Part 3, Intercession for Onassimus. Why use force? When the character we studied about Philemon. Force is, and we've seen this recently. You're inside your house and you're committing crimes. If the police come knocking on the door, hi, can we come in? Oh, no, 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 you ain't coming in here. Now, if the cops came walking up my drive right now and knocked on the door saying, we want to come in and look for something, come on in. No problem. No, you don't need a search warrant. That doesn't do anything wrong. Look for it, baby. But if you're guilty, the force is they come in, you know, banging the door down. So why use force? If Philemon does not want to do right, that's between him and God. That's between him and Onesimus. And if Paul goes in, marching in there in anger and forcing, finally say, no, forget you, Paul. Where if you were to just ask me, I understand. Okay, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see the end. It's in God's hand. And Paul's non-use of force here shows us God's salvation plan. God is not going to force us to be saved. 
Now, I think somebody in my family, I think his salvation is based upon someone else. I, I don't know, but I'm, that's what I think. I think someone converts him to get saved. I, I could be wrong. But that's not salvation. That's just as worse as saying, just say this prayer. Okay, now you, now, you know, you're okay. You're going to heaven. That's just as wrong. That's like someone's dating somebody. Oh, okay, I'll do it just so I can date and marry you. That's not correct either. Salvation is a free, free will of man. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You've got to want to be saved. Man, if I can force people to salvation, I've got a whole community. I can just go bang their brains out to get saved like Peter Cotwright. But it's not salvation. God has given you an option. Do you want to go to heaven before me or do you want to go to hell? Now, let's take, let's say someone who is a genuine atheist. I mean, generally, he's not doing this. He just does not believe there's God. Bible, anything. Would that man be pleased if God forced him to go to heaven in eternity? He wouldn't. And God has given that man, saying, listen, you can believe or you may not believe. It's your option. Would you rather... For a child to say, give me, give me, give me, give me, or would you have a please may I have? Can I please have this? Can you make a child force you to give him, give him something, or would you rather have your child ask politely? Again, let's look at marriage again. Would you like to marry somebody by a shotgun wedding? Or would you rather have that man get down his knee really wanting for your hand in marriage? Remind you, God never forces. God told Adam, Do not eat of that fruit of that tree, thou shalt surely die. And he put him in the garden. Three types of trees there. Trees for food, the tree of life, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God did not put a defense wall. He did not put a castle. He did not put a wall that blocked that tree of knowledge and good evil. Neither did he put neon signs or anything like that on the tree of life. And he put the man in the garden and said, okay, you do what you want to do. And what did man do? He said, Now, we have a man called John Calvin. And what John Calvin teaches is a forcefulness salvation that God predetermined before man was ever made that you will go to hell and you can't do nothing about it. You can believe in Jesus all you want. You're going to hell if God says you're going to hell. That's it. And then he predetermined that a man... If God proclaims that you will go to heaven outside of anything, you can do whatever it is. You can reject God. You can reject Jesus. You can throw the Bible into a fire. You can absolutely rebel against God. And God says you're going to heaven. You're going. That's foolishness of, of force. I grew up as a police officer studying under the U.S. Navy. And we have a thing that applies deadly force. That in the event if a critical situation happens, if we are given the authorization, we can kill anybody to take ground back. Because it won't be given, it can't be given, we've got to go in there and take by force. And I, I can't go any further on, the, on the why and what that's about. But the use of deadly force is we can do whatever we have to do to get it back. That's force. And what is God when it comes to salvation? For God so loved the world. 
that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have a life. Whosoever, that's free. There's no force. You are given the option. You want to. Or do you have to? Again, I'm not talking about children who are under the authority of the parents because most of them have to. As a parent, you've got to train your children right. The Bible says in Proverbs, they are built with foolishness. you got to use the rod. You've got to correct them out of that foolishness. So when it comes time in their life, They can do because they want to by what they've been taught. There are Christians who, who are saved. And we venture to the next avenue is, okay, as far as have to and you want to. You don't have to be a disciple. Just because you're a born again Bible believing Christian does not mean you're a disciple of Christ. You're saved. You're not going to hell. But you will have the choice. Do you want to go in all the world and preach the gospel? Do you want to suffer persecution? Do you want to leave your family and friends? Do you want to stop doing what you're doing? Do you want to take up your cross? Let's put it like this. Let's say about 2,000 years ago, a little more than that, let's say God in heaven spoke to Jesus. Like, Get your butt down there and save him. Now. Get down there and save him. What if God forced Jesus Christ? There would be no love. That is not God is love if you get down there and do it. And yet, when, when Jesus Christ offered to the Father and say, Father, they sinned, they fallen. There's no way for them to get back to you and me and the Holy Spirit. No way. Father, I will go down there and a prescribed time I will suffer, die, and bleed our blood that they may have eternal life. That's a free will. That's an offering. That's love. And what Paul's doing here in Philemon says, but I'll tell you what you know the book is. He's Onassimus is a slave owner of Philemon. Philemon owns him. He was lost. He ran away from Philemon. He comes across Paul. He gets saved. He is doing things for Paul. He is helping Paul and Paul's like. I enjoy it. I really love you. you. You are a fellow laborer. You are doing something. But I've got a problem right now. What's that, Paul? You're, you're a brother in Christ. You are a child of God. But you are property of another Christian. Finally, he owns you. He paid money for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you back to Philemon and you're going to tell him what happened. You're going to repent of your sins. You're going to make things right with Philemon. And I'm going to request that Philemon send you back to me. Well, Paul, why can't I just stay here? Why can't I just serve you like we're doing? Because it wouldn't be right. And on that says, I am faced with a deal right now. Do I force your owner to make you come back? Or do I ask him in love and hopefully he will respond that I can get the blessing and he can get the blessing by you? Question is, would you would have somebody stick a gun in your back force or would you like to have somebody come up to you and say sir can i have a couple quarters can i have a dollar so can i have something because i'm hungry or i need somewhere which would you like to have 
And you know how I give. I, I test the wars before I give anybody anything. But let's say at the end of the day, which would you be more pleased by giving? Giving to the person you had to give by force? No, that, that would cause nervousness. That would cause you'll have to call the police. That would cause him, is he going to find me? Fearfulness. But if you were to find someone who really needs something and you were able to meet their needs, as a Christian, you can thank God. Say, God, thank you very much. I hope that was to satisfy him. Do we go running to the boss and say, I want to raise? How far are you going to get? Or, sir, I've done this work. I do this. I really would like to have a raise. Where would you have a better chance? Where would Paul have a better chance with obtaining Onassimus again? And when we get back to the service of Christian, if we do it by force, There is no reward. Now let me say something. If you force your children to go to church as a parent, you as a parent will get a reward by God because you're doing right. You're making that child being subject to you. That child has no freedom, no matter what America teaches. You raise that child right, that's credit to the parent. But if you are doing things as a Christian, because you have to, that dies down. That quits. That feeling goes away. And whoever is forcing you, let's say they move, let's say they get sick, let's see, whatever, death, whatever happens to them. When they are out of your way, of your life, whatever it be. Then you're going to die down. You're not going to be, because they're not forcing you no more. But if you do it because you want to for God and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, it'll keep going. It'll keep going. Man, I, I don't know how long I've been doing the sign ministry. I don't know what year I started. I know my children are young. I did it because I wanted to do it. I've always done it because I wanted to do it. I'm not doing it for people to look at me. I'm not doing it to get credit in the church. I'm doing it because I want people to hear the gospel. I want the lost to know that Jesus saves. I want the Christian to know that there is a way to witness. There is a way to please God. And for anybody else, you're wrong and God's right. When I mean people come up to me, well, that's not what Jesus would do. That's, you're turning people away. Well, you're wrong. And the ministry, the God is, is correct. Now, outside of medical, outside of bad weather, and maybe no one around, or closed, or I think one time we had a, there was a police action or something like that, we try to be there. I've never woke up in the morning and said, well, I don't want to do this, go back to bed. I've never done that because I want to do it. I don't have anybody on the street ministry have that if they're not there, well, I'm not going. I'm not trying to please any man. And when we do it by force, we're not trying to please God. We're trying to please a man. Now let's get back to the children again. Well, let's, that child is trying to please his parents. Well, do you know as a child grows up, the only way they see God the Father is the, their own father? If you can't respect your father, you're not or going to have a hard time respecting God the Father. And yet, as a Christian, God gives us the opportunity for us to ask. He never demands. And yet, the Bible says, for a lost man, ye must be born again. That's force. That's a command. And yet God says to free will, you don't have to. You must, but it's your choice, your free will. I'm not going to make you. I am not going to, God, I am not going to make you go to heaven if you don't want to go.
There will be no one in heaven that did not want to go. Now, there will be people in hell that wish they had done what God said to go to heaven, but God has put out there, this is what you need to do. Noah, you need to build an ark. I don't want to build no ark. Fine, drown. Oh Lord, I want to. What's the measure? What do you? How do you want me to do? What do you? This is what I want you to do. And he did it. Salvation, Jesus Christ saved. I don't want that. I got my religion. I don't believe in God enough. Okay, fine. You must be born again. In order to get saved and go to heaven, you must be born again. But God's giving you a choice. What do you want? How do we deal with people? I want this. Give it to me now. Sir, may I please have the, the candy bar up there? <laughs> Sir, can you please tell me where your buckets are? Sir, this says $1.99, but the shelf says $0.89. Cents. How far do we get with commanding? And then again, another example is you got a guy who's a drill sergeant and he's got to drill his troops. He's not going to ask him for nothing. And we are soldiers of Jesus Christ. We have armor. And there are times that our leader, Jesus Christ, commands us. And if we want to do right and we want to survive the battle, we will follow that command. Repent. Rejoice evermore. Cease from praying. Confess your sin. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And yet that command by our military leader would be, if you don't want to do it, don't. I just won't give you no rewards. I won't give you no crowns. I won't give you an inheritance. So we are commanded by God for force, for training. Like I said, that military commander is instructed to struck his troops. Urgent. You need to learn and do what I train you to do before you go to war. And yet, if you don't want to learn, you don't want to do right, you can get dishonorable discharge. You can end up on the battlefield killed. And that instructor may not want to be hard. But that instructor is not like somebody who would be in a schoolroom teaching you a subject. And they're not going to scream at you. Make sure you know your Bible verse. Make sure you know what two pounds two is. No, they don't do that. They will show you step by step. Instructing. But what is the urgency of instruction? Paul sees he wants Onesimus and he wants him now. And his remark is to finally, can I please have him? Please. And he doesn't use force. There's a time for force. And there's a time for asking. Force may make you I'm sorry. Force may make someone else angry that you're doing that by force. Force may make you sound rude and crude. But in the military, for that soldier to learn, force is needed. For a child of a parent being forceful, it is needed. But yet, for the service of Jesus Christ, no force is needed. And if you've got to apply force, there are no rewards. It's not your credit. It's someone else's credit. They made you do it. And so when you come to a life as you are a Christian, I'm talking to Christians, and you say, well, I used to do that. What happened? 
one of the things is you may have been forced by someone else and then it just died out. Maybe you got cold as a Christian. You need to warm yourself out. But as a Christian, we can't force anybody to do anything. We can ask them, we can show them, we can instruct them, we can show urgency, but we can't force. See, there's a word, two words in the Bible, force and asking. Those are not the two words, but force and ask. What are those two words? Patience and long-suffering. Paul is showing great patience here, even though it's an urgency. Had he used force, he may have made finally him very angry. He's dealing with a new Christian, too. Force would not be a good example for Onassis. We got to get it right. There's a you know Ecclesiastes. There's a time to kill. There's a time to heal. There's a time to use force, and there's a time to ask. Jesus said, "Ask, seek, and knock." Asking is using your mouth. Seeking, you're going to you find it. Knocking, you're actually pounding. Come on, open up. When you use your armor of prayer, you're asking God. When you're using that sword, and that's force. I dealt yesterday with a Jehovah Witness, a, a, a dad and his son. I used force on the dad, and I, son, you got to know that Jesus is God. Young man, God is Jesus. You have a worldly Bible, Dad. It even says, new world. What's the Bible say about the world, young man? John 1 says the Word was in the beginning, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And, and I, I, this is how I say it. In First John, I forget where it says, it says, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Dad, that's removed out of your Bible. Young man, you got to know. I sent that child away with his death. I said, you got to know that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Plant that seed in that heart. Man, I, I use force on the on the dad because he's a deceiver and he's been deceived. And that young man, I, if I scolded that young man, that's not my place to scold him. I use kind of patience with that young man. I, hopefully I planted a seed. Someone will water, I pray. And may God get the increase out of that young man. But you, Dad, you in trouble. The Bible says you better hang a millstone about your head and raising that child up wrong. Because the Bible says as a father, you're that child, you ought to bring your child to Jesus. And you can't bring your child to Jesus because you don't have the right Jesus. Now, I could have forced that man. I could have grabbed him by it. You take that kid to a Baptist church to Jesus. No, 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 no. That wouldn't work. I'd been arrested and gone to jail. Force and asking. We've got to do right. It's shown right here. 66 books of the Bible, this one that doesn't even really have a chapter. And we see about force, and we see about asking, we see about demanding, and we see about, and let's go by love. And Paul chose the love and the patience. Though it's urgency, 